Good evening. This regular meeting of June 12, 2023 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Bradley? Here. Jones? Here. Parks? Here. Prohaska? Here. Ryan? Here. Sansi? Here. Whitman? Here. Here. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on May 8th, 2023, the strate strategic planning update meeting of May 22nd, 2023, as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting of May 8th, 2023, and the strategic plan update meeting of May 22nd, 2023, as submitted. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education to suspend the rules of order and go into the open form. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, if there's anyone who would wish to address the Board of Education, you may do so at this time. We ask that you state your full name, your connection to the district, and uh, limit your comments to three minutes using the timer that we have provided. I move the... Oh, oh go ahead. My name is Melinda Carter. My son goes to Hempstead High School. Um, on May 31st, our son was the victim of racial discrimination by an employee of the Dubuque Community School District. Since this incident at a Hempstead High School, we have gone through a range of emotions from disbelief, anger, disappointment, and sadness. Having to sit down with our 17-year-old son and debrief the situation has been traumatizing. We went, met with various members of the school district the day after the incident, and they allowed us to voice our concerns. Our main issue is that as parents, we were not notified until almost four hours after the situation occurred. We found out through social media that our son was involved. Going forward, we hope the district reevaluates the protocol of notifying parents in these situations. We also hope the district makes the right decision and does not allow Roger Poling to continue to teach in the Dubuque Community School District. We hope the district takes this further and removes his teaching license from the state of Iowa to help ensure that no other children have to go through this. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Thackeray Carter. Uh, my son, Kwame Carter, is a junior at Hempstead High School, so that's the affiliation. Um, it's, it's been a rough couple of weeks for us dealing with the aftermath of everything. Um, my 17-year-old son has, has been 
have a range of emotions, being really excited that he put on 15 pounds. He's been working out pretty hard, so he's excited about that. And he just got his, his learner's permit to drive a, to drive a vehicle. Um, but those things we aren't able to celebrate as, as, as much as we'd want to. Um, everything kind of came to a halt on the 31st of May, uh, where my son was attending school, and a teacher by the name of Roger Poling pulled him out of the class and uttered the phrase, what are you looking at? And I wanted to make sure um, that that word was documented because those were the words that were used and to give the full effect of what that means. Um, what that word means to a 17 year old kid is different than what that word means to me. Um, that's usually a word that's followed with some possible um, violent altercation. Um, having conversations with my mother, that word means something totally different to her which was immediately followed with some type of physical violence. Um, my grandmother, who isn't here, unfortunately, um, she passed away a few years ago. But I know that word means something totally different, where that is preceded by someone dying. Now, I don't mean to be um, making the situation hyperbole or, or bigger than what it is, but it's a serious situation in the sense that this happened about 1.30 um, in the PM, and we were notified about 4.15. So over two and a half hours is when we got word. Now, my job as a man, as the breadwinner, as a father is, number one, to protect my family and to have a situation to where I'm notified three hours later of something that happened to my son is, is not acceptable and it's not something that I think should be tolerated. Now, how things proceed and how things move forward, I definitely think there should be a protocol on what was changed. Um, I talked to the assistant principal, and she notified me that that decision was made above her. So she, her hands were kind of tied there at that point. So the protocol and how that works is completely unacceptable, um, and I'm not happy in that aspect of things. I think Mr. Poling should have his license revoked um, for the state of Iowa. I don't believe he should work in the state of Iowa. If he'd like to move his family, he has a duty to provide for his family, but it shouldn't be within this district. Would really like to see what happens here, how things move forward, and appreciate your time. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> so that brings us to an administrator retirement recognition from Superintendent Hawkins. Good evening. I'd like to ask Lee Colker to come to the front, please. So as most of you know, Lee Colker is the current principal at Hempstead High School. He's been um, an employee of us from the district for 33 years. Um, he became a teacher in 1990, assistant principal in 2003. So he's been the principal of Hempstead for the last 15 years. So we just tonight wanted to formally thank Lee for his years of service for us, not only in the Dubuque Community School District, but for the students and staff and families of Hempstead High School. So, Lee, thanks for all that you've done for Hempstead and Dubuque Community Schools, and we wish you the best in your next adventure. Congratulations. Thanks again, Lee, for your work for the district. Um, that brings us next to some board salutes, and I believe there are three out there. So Mr. Peraska, do I'll you want to get the first started? One, sure. 
Uh, board salute goes out to everyone involved in making this year's graduation ceremonies such a success for both high schools. Graduation ceremony obviously was held at Dalzell Field. Beautiful setting, beautiful day. Um, the, and I just want to thank everybody that was involved in orchestrating the event. It took a lot of support groups, um, many from our administrative teams, council, counselor teams, buildings and grounds team from the setup and take down for the various uh, changes from one school to the other, the communications, the technology, and all the other uh, things that uh, go into making su such a great uh, success. Um, it was a great day, and I'm sure the students uh, enjoyed their graduation. It, it was uh, very well planned, and uh, it was a great day to be a Ram and a great day to be a Mustang. Mr. Kelker, thank you. You were here. You were here, and I, you organized the uh, Hempstead graduation very well. I should also mention the student speakers did a great job. The student and the faculty speakers did a very, uh, great job, and the it was rather uh, quiet as far as the uh, students go. It was nice that they processed in during the uh, pomp and circumstances and processed out. So, thank you very much for everybody involved. Thank you, Mr. Prasca. Ms. Whitman? I have a board salute. Um, a bittersweet board salute goes to Amy Unmach, who is ending her service as executive director of the Foundation for Dubuque Public Schools. In her time at the helm of the foundation, she has grown the foundation's fundraising efforts, built new relationships, created new grant programs, and has been a champion for public education in Dubuque. Amy is a former teacher and parent in the district, and we thank her and wish her well as she takes the next step in her journey relocating to Kansas City to be near family. Amy, we are thankful for the tremendous impact you have had on the district and most importantly, our students. At the same time, we're thrilled to welcome Chelsea Cox as the foundation's new executive director. Chelsea also brings many years of experience in the district as a counselor at Hempstead High School. She deeply understands the work of the district and has many strong relationships from her experiences. As a former Dubuque Community School District Teacher of the Year, we also, we also know of her commitment to the excellence in education. Chelsea understands and champions the work of the district, and we are excited for the enthusiasm and experience she will bring to this role. So welcome, Chelsea. We look forward to working closely with you in this new role. Great. Ms. Jones? Last but certainly not least, um, a board salute goes to Hempstead High School student Charlie Driscoll, uh, who achieved an outstanding accomplishment this year. Charlie was notified that he received a perfect score of 36 on the ACT exam that he took during the district's Pave the Way testing day. This is an achievement attained by less than half of 1% of ACT test takers annually. And I know I took that test many years ago, and bravo. I, <laughs> I wish I was near that test. <laughs> Sadly, I was not. Uh, but we are pleased to have Charlie and his family here with us to be recognized. We'd like to invite him to come forward for a photo with both the superintendent and the board president, Ms. Parks. So congratulations. My score also not not close to that, <laughs> not close to that. So congrats again, Charlie. Yeah. Any other board salutes out there? All right. That brings us to our next motion. I move the Board of Education approve those items listed on the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Is there any item a member wishes to have pulled at this time? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right. 
So that brings us to our facilities and support services committee report from Mr. Prohaska and a, a lot of motions. It looks yeah, there like. are. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Uh, facility support services met last Monday, June 5th. Um, we reviewed some employee agreements and I'll be making some motions. Uh, we had an update on current district projects. Uh, we had some uh, professional and per purchase professional contracts dealing with buses and uh, dairy nutrition. We had an update on Roosevelt Middle School replacement. They've already started, I believe, be done by August. Uh, the Eisenhower Elementary School's uh, replacement, mechanical system replacement has also been started. It will be completed in August. The transportation fuel system replacement will be begin after July 4th holiday. It will be done next September. There was a pre-construction meeting held on the Sageville Elementary School solar project. This will be begin soon and it will be finished by late July. We also had a report from Rob Powers that the, the uh, Lincoln Elementary School Outdoor Wellness Project is still on track and should be out for bid in November. We had a report from Synergistic and a new um, energy specialist, Josh Posiek, is going to be with the district. Uh, he's had some uh, experience with the district uh, prior to working for Synergistic. We discussed some charter bus services contracts. We uh, talked about safety equipment transfer. We, uh, Kevin mentioned about the investment quote results. And then we, uh, Superintendent Hawkins shared with us the um, middle school committee. And it's kind of, it's often going, the petition is out and circulating. The core group has been formed and will meet and uh, to discuss plans. We reviewed the amendment with Envision Architecture. And let's see. Uh, well, we, uh, Rob Powers mentioned that the storm sewer that will be coming up has collapsed at Sageville. Uh, we also, are, uh, Kevin mentioned that we'll have to take some uh, liability insurance out for the, our, our groups using Court 1. Okay, so I'll just go to some motions here. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the bus drivers in attendance as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the bus drivers in attendance as presented. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to add that for the better part, all of our agreements are right around the 3% across the board. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the non-bargaining employees as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the non-bargaining employees as presented. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the maintenance employees as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the maintenance employees as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the 12-month secretaries as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the 12-month secretaries as presented. Any discussion? I believe Brian's going to come up to explain a little bit about this. Good evening. Uh, since facilities on uh, Monday of last week, we've met again. Uh, we've had some, some movement with our bargaining groups. So the 12-month secretary group uh, was looking to unionize at the start of our negotiations. Um, they reached a tentative agreement. They voted it down, and since it was the first contract that they voted on, they were able to walk away from the union since it wasn't ratified. And so we added them back to the non-bargaining group uh, where they received the same increase as the, uh, the other non-bargaining groups. It's kind of a unique situation there. And our truck drivers and mechanics ratified this morning with a vote, 
and uh, both were given 3% increase, but the mechanics, since we've not seen full staff in two years, uh, took the fifth position since it was already costed and used that wage to supplement pay in hopes of attracting and retaining a full four-person staff. Um, we're currently at a three-person staff, and uh, it's, it's not been full staff since December of 2021. So we're trying to make sure we can get everybody filled. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. As Brian mentioned, uh, the truck drivers and mechanics employees. I move that the Board of oh, Education. We didn't pass this first oh, one. We, didn't pass we got to get the secretary's pass. Okay. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, as, as Brian had mentioned about truck drivers and mechanic employees, I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with the truck drivers and mechanic employees as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with truck, dri truck driver and mechanic employees as presented. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number eight to Tricon Construction Group on the Senior High School Renovation Phase Two project in the increased amount of $104,576.58. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number eight to Tricon Construction Groups on the Senior High School Renovation Phase Two project in the increased amount of $104,576.58. Is there any discussion? A lot of this has to do with the furniture casework. Uh, also some uh, replacement walls. There was a water main that had to be capped. They discovered that they didn't know about. And uh, a little bit of a subfloor as far as the health fitness center goes. Okay, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specification, form a contract, and estimate of total cost for the Dalzell Field video board replacement project and set the date, time, and location for the public hearing as July 10th at 4.30 at the Dubuque Community School District. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total costs for the Dalzell Field Video Board Replacement Project and set the time, date, location as July 10th, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. at Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Thank you for finishing. I finished that for you, Jim. <laughs> Any discussion? I think the without uh, going to say too much about it. This video board's been in there 10 plus years and it, uh, it's, been, it's about time. It'll be fi not finished this fall, but the following fall. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Straka Johnson Architects PC for the Dubuque Initiatives the Butte Community School District Preschool Renovation Project in the amount of $10,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Straka Johnson Architects PC for the Dubuque Initiatives Dubuque Community School District Preschool Renovations Project in the amount of $10,000. Is there any discussion? This will be the preschool, which will be located at the uh, former Medline building. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education authorize payment of the final June 2023 bill subject to post audit by the board. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education authorize payment of the final June 2023 bills subject to post audit by the board. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the transfer of funds from the general fund to the student activity fund for athletic safety and protective gear in the amount of $53,149.40 or as determined and eligible as of June 30th, 2023. 
Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the transfer of funds from the general fund to the student activity fund for athletic safety and protective gear in the amount of $53,149.40 or as determined and eligible as of June 30th, 2023. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve amendment number two would envision architecture LLC for the middle school study project in the amount of $86,400. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve amendment number two with envision architecture LLC for the middle school study project in the amount of $86,400. Is there any discussion? They will continue as being our uh, front for the uh, project. Leading us through these next Leading steps. through the next, few months. next yep. few months. Yeah. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with WHKS and company for the Sageville Elementary School culvert replacement project in the amount of $18,900. Second. Second. Ooh. <laughs> Lots of seconds that time. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with WHKS and company for the Sageville Elementary School culvert replacement project in the amount of $18,900. Is there any discussion? I believe that that was Rob told us there was a cave in of some variety. And I think this is probably about a 400 foot culvert roughly. So it needs to be done. Gotcha. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Prohaska. Yep. It's a lot of motions for you yep. to do this time. <laughs> that brings us to the Educational Programs and Policy Committee report from Ms. Bradley. Thank you, Dr. Parks. I have no motions to make, but some information to share. Jim covered the motions. I've got, all, I've got them all covered. He's got the mark on it. Least. The um, Educational Programs and Policy Committee, which is the other committee of the board, met on June 6th at 4.30 in the boardroom. I'll just remind people that you're always welcome to attend either or both of the committee meetings. We love when we have folks come and listen to what's going on. And if you want to be a part of the agenda for some reason, that's a contact to uh, Carrie Moss, our board secretary, to be part of the agenda. So at our June 6 meetings, um, as is our protocol with this committee, we started by looking at the district strategic plan. Superintendent Hawkins extracts one or more items from the strategic plan to bring to the board for an update and information. This committee is focused on educational programming and policy. So we started with uh, the collaborative learning communities that exist at the high schools. Mark Burns, our executive director of secondary education, brought with him two high school or three high school instructional coaches, Jared Deutsch, Mark West, Kurt, Kurt Deutsch, and we learned from them about the collaborative learning communities, they, as they call them, CLCs, at both Hempstead and senior high schools. These are sessions, regularly held sessions, where teachers come together with each other and with the instructional coaches to talk about teaching and learning, to talk about students and their progress toward the learning standards. And so the, the um, instructional coaches are strategic in those conversations, and they're in the four core areas in terms of math, science, social studies, and um, English. What they talk about are things like interventions to help teachers uh, work with students who need additional work, be it a reteaching or other uh, more remedial, relearning kinds of, um, of strategies, or where it's learning extensions, where students have the need to have additional challenging materials and ideas brought before them. So it was very interesting for us to hear um, from these high school instructional coaches that who are seeking to have important structures leading to improved student achievement. They exist for that purpose. Then we heard about the elementary uh, counterpart to that, 
the high schools call their CLCs, Collaborative Learning Communities, the elementaries, and I think the middle schools, I might be wrong about the middle schools, they have such a structure, but the PLC is Professional Learning Community. Again, it's a gathering together in small groups of teachers to talk about teaching and learning. And so they work with assessment rubrics, uh, formative assessments, which is the day-to-day -day kind of assessment that we do in our classrooms, learning standards, differentiated instruction, prerequisite skills to mastering the learning standards that we expect all students to be able to learn with our help, and interventions and strategies needed for students to meet the learning standards. So you can see the focus of those regular ongoing conversations before school, during planning periods, whenever they might take place, their purpose is to help teachers come together to continue to learn and grow in terms of their teaching and helping their students to learning. Again, student achievement is our focus. So we appreciated that, and we then looked at, um, in, that, in the same educational programs part of the agenda, we heard from Shirley Horseman, who is our Executive Director of Student Services, and she brought to us information about the IJAG program. You may be familiar with the ongoing part of the IJAG program, which stands for Iowa Jobs for America's Graduates. It's an ongoing expense that of $150,000 that comes from the dropout program and the funding we receive from the state as public schools for trying to prevent drop, students dropping out of high school and trying to help them get to graduation. So the IJAG program um, takes at-risk students who have difficulty. Some are homeless, some are struggling with learning situations, many other situations that challenge their preparation to get to high, to high school graduation and also then to success in after high school in jobs and in post graduate education. So the IJAG program works with 120 students in grades 9 through 11. It's also available at the middle school in grades 6 through 8. And we're delighted that the alternative, the Alta Vista campus, the ALC, Alternative Learning Center, has been, we have been asked to pilot the, for two years with no additional cost to the district, using the IJAG program in that setting which to me is very exciting, and it assists students with employment goals, works to help them connect with career pathways. We have 21 career pathways in our high schools. It's a marvelous opportunity for kids to have barriers removed for them getting to high school graduation and getting to job and post-secondary um, education success. So we're very pleased about that. We then move to dealing with our ongoing review of policies. The board policies are reviewed every five years for potential updating and modification. This time we looked at six policies that focused on the financial operation of our district. Our um, chief financial officer, Mr. Kelleher, brought us information that the board was pleased to work with those policies on. Meeting concluded by hearing from the superintendent who brought us good news of the kinds of end of year programs that were held around the district. It's such a bittersweet kind of thing this time of the year with my old educator hat on. Everybody's ready for a break and yet it just doesn't seem right to stop and take, take time away from education. So I'll just mention that we were, it was shared with us at the summer learning at summer reading academy, which is for all students in our district welcome who are completing first grade and going into second grade. They'll have the opportunity, regardless of their reading level, to come and keep their reading skills refreshed and renewed and up to date. That summer learning lag is a very frightening kind of thing when it comes to those young readers. And so we're very pleased to be holding that the, the month of July from July 5th through 28th and breakfast and lunch will be served to those who are participating. So here we go with summer learning. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> we, we can, our next meeting will be July 11th. Again, come join us if you care to. It's at 4.30 in the boardroom. Great. Thank you for that recap of the meeting. Sure. Appreciate it. That brings us to new business. 
I move that the Board of Education approve the superintendent's contract and salary benefit package as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the superintendent's contract and salary benefit package as submitted. Is there any discussion? I'll just say that, uh, Amy, you're almost in your first year. I'm almost there. On the job. <laughs> and we all know that you had some um, baptism of fire, so to speak. And uh, you've handled the situations very well. And we appreciate your being our superintendent. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. It's been a great first year, and I appreciate the support from all the board members. And like I always say, too, my team that sits out there every day as well. So it's a big, it's a team effort. So I appreciate all your support. So thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Yeah. Any other discussion? I'll second it. It's been seconded. Oh, sorry. Okay. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education receive and file superintendent's recommendation to terminate employee contract pursuant to Iowa Code Section 279.27 and 279.15. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file superintendent's recommendation to terminate employment contract pursuant to Iowa Code Sections 279 sorry, dot 27 and 279.15. Dot one five. Is there any discussion? I would just like to present this to you, um, Ms. Parks, and receive and file that recommendation of termination of the employee contract pursuant to Iowa Code sections 279.27 and 279.15. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education Approve the proclamation recognizing Juneteenth and authorize the president and secretary to sign on behalf of the board. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the proclamation recognizing Juneteenth and authorize the president and secretary to sign on behalf of the board. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries and I will read the proclamation. Whereas Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, and Liberation Day, recognizes and commemorates the end of slavery in the United States 158 years ago, and whereas Juneteenth acknowledges the end of the Civil War and the emancipation of black Americans and is now recognized as a federal holiday, and whereas the district is continually focusing, focused on the important work of breaking down barriers of racism, and whereas we seek to raise awareness of Juneteenth and other culturally important holidays and observances to foster greater understanding and to celebrate the rich ethnic diversity across our district and community. And whereas Dubuque's Multicultural Family Center will host the community's annual Juneteenth celebration with a variety of activities from June 16th to the 18th and the community is encouraged to attend. Now, therefore, I, Kate Parks, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim June 19th as an observance of Juneteenth, signed this 12th day of June, 2023. I'm excited to go to some of those activities. All right. Is there any other board member or administrative issue at this time? Seeing that there are none, we are adjourned. <laughs>